In this lecture, we are going to learn how we can query data from the table from our NestJS application. And along the way, we will also understand what is eager loading. So let's go to VS Code. And here in our user controller, we have this route called get users decorated with at get decorator. So basically, whenever a get request will be made to this URL, to root URL slash users, this route will be executed. And from within this route, we are calling the get all users method of the user service. So if I go to user service, there we have this get all users method. And here what we are doing is on the user repository, we are calling the find method to fetch all the records, all the rows from the user table. This find method, when we are calling it on the user repository, it is going to find, it is going to fetch all the rows from the user table. And it is going to return us all those rows as an object. And we are returning that to the user controller. And from there, we are returning it in the response. So if I go to Postman, and if we make a get request to this user's endpoint, you will see that in the result, we have an array of all the users. So whatever user we have created in our table, we have all those users here. And for each user, we are getting the ID of the user, the username, email, password, the created at, updated at, and deleted at. So here we are getting the details of user. But along with this, what I also want is, I want to fetch the profile details for this specific user. So instead of just having the user details in the response, I also want to have the profile details of that user in the response. And for that, we can use eager loading. Eager loading in type ORM means that when you fetch an entity from the database, its related entities will be automatically loaded alongside it without us having to explicitly specify it in our query. So instead of explicitly querying the data from the related table, when we enable eager loading, the related data will be automatically fetched with the given entity. So for example, in our case, when we are querying for user data, user table is related to profile table. Currently, when we are querying the user table, we are only getting the details from the user table. But when we enable eager loading, along with the user details, in the result, we will also get the profile details. So let's see how we can enable eager loading. And there are two ways to enable eager loading. The first way is, if I go to user service.ts, so here we are using this find method to query the user table. To this find method, we can pass an object. In that object, we can specify this relations property. To this again, we can assign an object. And in there, we can specify the related property name. So for the user entity, the property on which we are creating the relation is profile. So here we need to specify this property inside this object and we need to set it to true. And that's it. Let's save the changes. Let's go to Postman now. And now if I make the request along with the user, okay, here we have some error. Maybe our server was not restarted properly. So let's try to make the request again. And now you will see that in the response, we have the user details. And along with that, we also have this profile detail. Now, for the first two users, the profile is null. So that's why you are seeing null here. But if I scroll down, for the third user, we do have a profile. In that profile, you will see all the properties are null. If I scroll a little bit more, we have another user with the profile. And for that user, we have the profile details also, like first name, last name, and gender. So as you can see, when we have enabled eager loading with that, when we are querying the user table along with the user data, we are also receiving the profile data in the response. So here we do not have to write any logic manually to fetch the related profile data from the profile table that will be taken care by type ORM when we have enabled eager loading. So this is one way of enabling eager loading by specifying an object in there specifying this relations property and in that property you again pass an object and there you specify the related entities for which you want to get the data in the response currently we have only one relation from user to profile 
but let's say from user we also have relation to other entities like tweet in that case we can also specify that if we want to get all the tweets of that user in the response we can also set it to true something like this but currently we do not have this relation so let me remove it from here so this is one way of enabling eager loading another way is let me remove this from here so another way of enabling eager loading is you can go to entity there when we are specifying this one to one relation to that we are also passing this configuration object in that object currently we are specifying the cascade property in the same way we also have the eager property and we can set it to true and in this way also whenever we are going to query for user data since we have enabled this eager loading to true it is also going to query the profile table and in the response we will have profile related data also let's save the changes and let's quickly verify this so if i send the request we should still have the same response as you can see we are still getting the profile data with the user data in the response and this is what eager loading is but here since we have a relation from user to profile and since we have enabled the eager loading that's why whenever we are going to fetch the details from the user table it is also going to fetch the detail from the profile table but profile entity does not know about the user entity if i go to profile entity you will see that in the profile entity we have some columns like first name last name gender date of birth bio profile image etc but we do not have anything to specify that this profile is related to user so user entity knows about the profile entity because there we have a property of type profile entity but here the profile entity does not know about the user entity at all so that's why if we fetch data for profile entity it is only going to give us the data from the profile table it is not going to give us the related data from the user table so what we will do is we will just quickly test it and for that in the profile controller let me go ahead and let me inject the profile service to use this profile service we also need to import it so in this way we have injected an instance of profile service here now let me go ahead and let me create an endpoint a get endpoint and to use this get endpoint we also need to import it from nestjs slash common let's create a method here a public method and let's call it get profile or get profiles we want to get all the profiles and from here we are simply going to return and call a method from the profile service in the profile service we have not created any method yet but let's say we are going to call it as get profiles or maybe get all profiles let me copy this method from here and let's also save these changes let's go to profile service in there again first we are going to create a constructor using this constructor we are going to create and inject an instance of profile repository so for that we need to use this repository and to use it we need to import it from type orm let's specify the type here so it should be profile entity right we want to create a repository of profile entity so that we need to specify here and we also need to decorate it with inject repository decorator so here let's say at inject repository and to use this inject repository again we need to import it from nestjs slash type orm and to this also we need to specify the entity for which we want to inject the repository in this case it is going to be profile all right let's save the changes here and finally we also need to go to module file and there we are already importing the profile so that's fine let's save the changes let's go to profile service.ts and here let me paste the method which i copied from the controller and i'm going to call it as get all profiles and here instead of profile service we are going to use profile repository and on that we are going to call find method let's save the changes and if i go to controller 
So you will see that in order to make a request to this endpoint, we have to go to root URL slash profile and there we need to make a get request and when we make a get request this method will be called so let's go to postman again and let me copy this url let me open a new tab let me paste it here we want to make a get request but we want to make a get request to profile api to the profile endpoint okay if i make a request here in the response you will see profile related data like first name, last name, gender, date of birth, etc. As you can see here, so we have the profile related data, but we do not have the related user data. And that's because profile entity does not know anything about the user entity. Here, we do not have any field which can relate this profile with user. Anyway, in this lecture, I wanted to cover what is eager loading. So I hope now you understand what eager loading means and how we can query data from the related tables using eager loading. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.